on today's show. Everybody's back in the studio. We are excited to have a morning with you. It is Friday. We're ready to rock. Belly found a new bar trick. And ladies and gentlemen, this will get you laid. If you are a woman, this will work. If you are a man, this will work. If you're into people of the same sex, different sex, doesn't matter. This will work. Belly's bar trick coming up next. Also, we're putting me on the couch. We put Belly on the couch last week. It was great. Now he's going to break me down because your boy is just having all kinds of... I'm stressed out, Belly. Break me down next. Loots Dog in the Morning Studios. Strap it. TTR Studios. Belly Matt LaBelle is across the way. What is up, my friend? Not much. How you doing, Luch? Oh, uh, boy. How you be? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I either. don't know, dude. I don't know either. I'm just, you know, things are just happening. Music's, things are happening. Yeah, music's going all over the place. Well, no, I did that. Whenever I want to get super, like, if I want to make a really good point, Belly, I rip the music away and then I bring it back. Uh, it's kind of my move. I don't know if you guys noticed that yet. Welcome to the show. Everybody in the social media lounge, today we are serving gin and tonic. For you? How do you make that, Mr. Belly Matt LaBelle? I use, use the selected Bar Hill gin from Vermont made with honey extract, so it has a little sweetness to it. Ooh, that sounds good. And then you uh, toss in a little ice, okay. top it off with some fancy tonic water that comes in a glass bottle just because, you know, we're doing Fine. fancy. Highballer? Are we doing what kind oh, of? Oh, it's just a little uh, rocks glass. Not uh, too much tonic, just enough gin. That's what you're getting, so get your day drink on. Pop off Social Media Lounge. You will be expected to participate a ton today. Why? Because we love you. That's exactly why. See, that's how we do it right there. All right, so we're excited. Thank you for being here, and we want to get the show started right away. Belly found something that was going on in, in his bar that he saw someone doing, and then it begged the question, does this get this person laid? We will not tell them yet. Tease this. I don't want to do this first segment. So I do want to. But do you think it got this person laid at least? Late? Not necessarily that night, but in their life. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like this is a no doubter, but it's not something that everybody can do. Yes. You'd have to train. Yes. You have that to go to MIT. The... <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that is all the training or the teasing that we will do. We'll talk about that coming up next. We do. Uh, we have a possible Matty Potts surprise sighting coming in. Later in the show. Yeah, as long as he calls the right Skype. Yeah, I haven't told him that, so we'll do that during second break. However, let's just have some fun with you guys and really just, uh, dude, you, we got to talk about this. First of all, I'm, I'm having a moment right now because, like, you guys should have seen me just setting all this stuff up. I can't tell you how much better this show is when we are all in studio. I can't thank Belly enough for the work that he does when I am gone. This is not a one-man show in studio. It's too much. It's a lot. Him. It's so much. And you guys don't even realize it because of how well he handles it, but I know it because I got to do it. I got to do half of it when I'm in here with him. So watching him do it all on his own and hardly even miss a beat, it's, it's, it's impressive. Okay? I skipped some steps. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. You made it look great, and honestly, like I just did. Were you okay? Were you swamped? Were you buried? You How gotta you stop feel? Leave, leaving because you're praising me way too much, and I don't like it. I know. I'm, I appreciate it, man. I couldn't do this show without you. I couldn't do any of TTR. Studios I appreciate without it. You. Well, uh, uh, there is this other half uh, I count on for this, so works out. But what? <laughs> There's this other half of the show that I count on for What's it. What's that? You. Oh. Dog. <laughs> oh, oh, I get jokes. Okay. You Luch dog. I got to change. By the way, I've changed my your name in my phone now to Luch. Yeah. So that's how you do it. So, so that you will no longer call I'm, me Adam. I got to stop there calling you, you. You don't. Adam does not exist. Nope. 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 That's it's why, just the Luch. My, look, Coach Reed was our was my he was my best friend for like he still is one of my best friends. I don't know why I was using past tense. I'm just he was like it, he was my roommate. He was in my like like we we did this together. He was belly. I still to this day call him Coach. If he comes over, I say, hey, what's up, coach? Because that's his name on the show. See, every I'm one of those people that has first and last names in my phone for 
everyone in my phone. How do you save somebody's number in your phone? Typically, I have that person. Do you order. go nickname or do you go, do you, do you put no, a I little like. I do full like, name. I do full name. What about if it's like a Tinder date? If it's like, you know, Jessica from Tinder. Are you writing t Jessica Tinder? No. I'm just. Well, That's scary guess, because yeah. if she sees that, she's probably not going to like that. Well, you got to save it that way at first, but once you find out, I'm going to change it once I find is out. Is Jessica Tinder offended when she sees her name in your phone as Jessica Tinder? I've Social Media it. Lounge, does that offend you? So a couple years ago, I was going through my phone, and I had <laughs> five, five random girl numbers. Just random girl. One of them had random girl one. They were basically Jessica Tinders. Just five of them? But five. <laughs> And it was just, no, the words were literally <laughs> random girl. How could I ever text? Oh, dude, that doesn't help you at call. all when you're trying to figure out who nope. you're talking to. That's You nope. might as well just write in zero or four. Apparently, Drunk Matt, when he was in college, decided the best way to save a number in a phone was just typing in random girl. God. <laughs> but what, if you, put in the words, what if you put in the word smoke show? I do that. Well, so I do that. No, it's not. I I like the word smoke show. What does it mean? Well, we're going to do that here in a minute. The other thing is the um, I have. Uh, so when I go out to bars and I meet bartenders and I meet and like I save them with their first name and the bar I'm there. They work at. That makes sense. So that makes sense. A lot of the bartenders Melissa, and people bar in the taco. service industry I work at where work where have met and go out with, I have saved in my phone as their first name and the place they work. I would like for the social media lounge right now. In fact, can you show them? Can you pop them off? And I want them to start telling us in the in the lounge, I want you to write the best or funniest name you've either saved in your phone or have seen somebody save a a as you in their phone. Right now in my phone. It says Amanda Crompson, okay. not Amanda Thompson. Yeah. So you know somebody. That's how I, I mean, I kind of just have little jokes. Um, are you a joke saver? Are you a, a first and last name saver? Social Media Lounge, what is the funniest name that you have saved in your phone or that you've seen saved for yourself? One time, a coach that I was coaching with saved me as decaf. Because you needed some? Because God forbid if we ever gave this kid caffeine. They just <laughs> yeah. called me decaf. That's funny. Unbelievable. So pop off social media lines to see what you come up with. I'm sure I'm belly in some people's phones. You're one of mine. my longest belly in mine. Your, one of my longest <laughs> time friends called me belly the other day. Yes, good. <laughs> You're welcome. Like I've known this guy since like we were both like eight and nine years old, and he called me belly the other day. <laughs> Joe Swan? No, it wasn't oh. Joe. All right, so let's get into Smoke Show, if you would, please. Show the people. Uh, let's go to T, if we can. T. Um, I, I had some. I'll I, show you a Smoke Show. Hey. <laughs> I got what another Smoke Show right what, here. Whoa, what does that mean to you? By the way, Art, wow, have you realized how much clearer this is? Oh, it's beautiful. I Is that internet? Mm, I'm feeling so But why? Good. That's not, that should be Well, cameras. no, I actually changed my camera All right, over here. That looks good. I lowered it and angled it straighter at me. That looks good. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, you look good right now. And, and you're you. I gotta admit, your camera angle is weird. It, it it's almost like when you're look at the camera. It's like like 42 degrees. Yeah. What the hell's going little... on over here? So, um, I got a little I got a little note from some listeners, wondering what the fuck the smoke show means. Are they popping off? No, uh, they're uh, just. Uh, you got any You got any suggestions? If no, it's got to be worth it. If no, then we'll just keep the show rolling. Uh, let's see if uh, if I wanted to be strategic about it. Uh, if it's a girl I'm interested in, make it something clever. I think Smoke Show is pretty good. Smoke Show is great. But what does smoke, smoke Show mean? Because I got yelled it's at for someone, Smoke Show. I mean, it's, I got I got a talking to a, that we are a little bit. It's a guy crass, slang. Crass. I got compared to Howard Stern. I mean, I I think we can be a little Howard Stern I sometimes. Don't. I disagree 100 percent with that. Sometimes, and I am not against especially because Potts draws a lot of Potts his inspiration and in how That's how fair. he comes across on the radio from Howard Stern. Yeah, because we could be talking about chopping down a tree in the woods and trying to get metaphorical, and he'll just take it to his boner. Mm, boners. Oh, well, who's got wood? <laughs> I got wood right here. Right now, Potts, we love you, but that's his humor, and he is by they the call way. Call me the lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> You have your sounds up? <laughs> he is, by the way. Oh. Touchdown! 
He is um, a Stern fan, and we are not. I am not. I have never grown up listening to Stern. I like Stern. I, 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 know, I know who Robin is. I've seen Private Parts. It's one of my favorite movies. But I'm not somebody who likes... I, we don't try to be shock radio. Let's put it that way. Okay? Baba Booey. <laughs> my mom... From the my, social media. Yeah, my dad's, <laughs> my dad's uh, fantasy football team is Mama Look a Booba Day. Yep. So all you diehards will, will appreciate that. However, trying to explain that to my mom, not so much. Now, I don't. I mean, he's especially in this area where we are. I know he started at DC One Hundred One. Well, he got his big, his, got big, his big start, start. at DC One Hundred One, which is a station here in DC, a big station. Anyway, um, I just, I got, I had someone bring up to me that we are not necessarily female friendly, or, or, or that we are a little bit. I don't agree with that, and I, and I realized I was like, wait a minute. I always am very careful to say, you know, if you're dating a girl or if you're dating a guy, I always try to like. Take it from both ends, or if you're gay, you're straight. I don't care. We're not. We're not here to judge who you are as a listener. Of However, course. we are men talking about things. So, and, and eventually, we're gonna fall into a territory that's probably gonna offend women because we don't know any better sometimes. And I'm not saying that as an excuse. I think we. But is it is that an excuse to jump always. on people? But no, Be- because if, because I don't think we ever learn if if you know someone goes, oh, there's two guys talking about what a woman thinks. They're an asshole. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Well, no. We got to be no, no, very no. touchy because there's a lot of things going on in the real right, world but, right now. But, 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 but there, are, there are men having discussions all over the world. And if they're doing it the wrong way, instead of telling them that they're being an asshole, let's explain to them why that, that makes somebody feel like they're talking like an asshole. For example. Teach, teach instead of scold. Teach instead of scold. If you're offended, first of all, if somebody tells you that they are offended by something that you said, you need your, your first action should be, okay, well, tell me why. Because instead of saying, well, that's not right. Because well, let me tell GF, you something. If you start with GFY. If you start with GFY, you nuke the whole thing. Nobody gets any better. <laughs> Seriously. And when this person told me that I just, when, I, when they started to, like, you know, making a complaint about some of the words that we use to describe women on here, the hot doctor talk and the hot lawyer talk got me in a little bit of trouble. And... I, I get that, and my first reaction was going to be like, "Get the hell out of here!" I'm a, we're trying, we're trying to be funny. Are you tell me you can't be, you can't have comedy anymore? And they're like, mm, "Well, you don't know what it's like to be a woman." I don't. And that's you're when I said, right. "Okay, then conversation over," because I'm never gonna know. So if you're not willing to teach, then don't knock it, because I'm not gonna know what it's like to be a woman ever. I'm never going to have a vagina. No. Nope. Like, I could just sit there and say, cool, you don't know what it's like to be a man. Sorry. Hey, you don't know how you'll feel in 30 years or something. And that's the other thing. <laughs> so whenever, and I'm not, I'm, so whenever somebody brings something to you that says that you've offended them, first of all, I think you should receive it with, oh, how and why? What did I do? And how can I learn from that? Because it is not your job as somebody who offended someone to tell them whether or not they should be offended. They are, and that's the case. Period. Period. So listen to them. Now, if that's the case, if somebody's willing to listen to you, maybe don't scold them. Teach them. Mm-hmm. All right, and I'm I'm speaking from. Um, this is how I feel about this because well, this, somebody, is, this pe- is good in in a lot of aspects of conversation in general, uh, especially when conflict arises. This is all about the key word in most relationships: honest discussion. Mm, Let's get out honest the discussion. Theory. Are you really Therapy ready voice. for that? But are you, are you really ready well, for that? Because me having an honest discussion with you can get really. Well, it can get honest. Yeah, well, that's but people need to not be afraid of honesty. People need to be receptive of honesty because honesty comes from the purest part of us, right? So honestly, if you're in the right? social media lounge, <laughs> when I call somebody a smoke show on this show, does that offend you? Does that bother you? So it, I'd like to know from the social media lounge, does that bother you? Because somebody asked me, what the hell does that even mean? And I had no idea that this would be offensive. And my first reaction was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. From the social media lounge, it means too hot to handle. Too hot to handle. <laughs> okay. Can I tell you? <laughs> can I tell you? Just spoiler alert. This word is made up in my own head. We made this up. I don't know if people say smoke show, but we started saying it because. I'm sure it came from a movie. Did it something. though? Do you know where it came? Because I started really swingers thinking about could, this. I feel like I could watch swingers and I bet you the word smoke show is said. Smoking hot. I combined smoking hot and oh, this is a show from from like oh that that's a show. You got to see this. You remember this the uh, the junkies say that all the time. Oh, that 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 thing that was a show. 
They and some, like if and a some if people, a wedding hold on if a wedding was a was a mess they would say that wedding was a show. And I'm fairly if, certain on the fan they say smoke. They just say smoke when they're talking about all the time. Just smoke. And so or, <laughs> and it's not always a mess. It's just if something was a spectacle they'll be like oh that was a show. And so for me to, I think I just combined two words. And then made it. Are a you funny saying you think word? you invented smoke show? Yes, I'm telling you that I didn't take it from anything. I just t- made I've a funny word to describe met- a hot woman. I heard smoke show a long time ago. And quite frankly, if you're mad at me commenting because a woman was pretty, I don't know what to, I don't know how, how to take that because a lot of women are I've learned are very and men insecure in the way that they feel because of the way that society has put that on them. They have to be a, a size two. They have to have their makeup on. And these are all rules that were made by men thousands of years ago. Response to that argument? I'm hoping that... Are we... Because my argument... I am hoping we are moving towards a future, of course, that we are more equal in our respect for each other. Um, I, of course, at all times, think very highly of women and men in general when it comes to... All you have to do is show me good character... And you're a good person to me no matter where or what you wear, whatever. But you I'm are learning from- that the, even though you are like that and you think like that and you are a good person, you are, you do care about women. You could say something like, oh, yeah, that I- girl's a smoke show. And, and, and someone, all their, all that someone's going to hear is you're objectifying women. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what smoke show means. The, see, you're in my mindset, women. It- and and I'm it sucks. This is hard. I need. I would way, like a woman in this conversation. Only, I'm not trying to do this. It's just that. But that's look, guys. There are there are, there are situations. In my mind, I want to be a smoke show. I want someone. I am to, a smoke show. Yeah, exactly. Look at this. Boom. Okay. I mean, we're tuxing it up for you people over here. Smoke <laughs> show in my mind means super hot. Um, something to look at. That, that is really pretty and something that like, you know, boom, smoke and it's a show. It's, it's like not, it's a spectacle. Yes. A spectacle, a spectacle. is a good way a to describe it. A guy can be it. a smoke show. A girl can be a smoke show. A adorable. Nah, I don't want to say adorable pet, but like, you know, just a spectacle. Yeah. But I don't think it's wrong to comment me personally. Tell me if I'm wrong. I don't want to live in a world where it's wrong for me to say that a woman is attractive. Yeah. I, don't, I think it should that be. That sucks. I, I think the beauty I mean, of people should be celebrated. But what about. People who aren't attractive, or, or I mean, some to find, me, find somebody beauty, always finds somebody else attractive. Find the beauty in your life. Right. Find, find the beauty in your life, whatever it may be. Like it's, you know what? it's gonna be found. I want to, I want to continue this. I do. I think this, this begs more than just a twenty-minute conversation. If we can, maybe we get a woman on the line. Can we get a female perspective on the line? That would be fantastic. Five seven one three five four seven three three eight. If you are around and willing to have a conversation with us on the air, and we would certainly love a female perspective because I am not trying to say uh, whoever brought this up to me is wrong. They're not. I'm trying to learn something and I need a female perspective. So five seven one three five four seven three three eight. We will take your calls next and get back into this right here on Luke's Talking Morning.
an amateur hour over here. Luke Stog in the morning hanging out with you, TTR Studio. Sorry, Billy, that was my bad. Yell at me. You've been amateuring it up all day. I know. You're like, start the show. Mute. Can you mute? Can you mute the lines if we're going to start the stream, please? <laughs> uh, Welcome back, folks! <laughs> You know the person. The thing that the thing that's interesting to me is that the person that that got offended by the word smoke show did not know what the word smoke show meant. Yeah, and it I mean, was the not... way that we were talking about it that that was bothering them. And I appreciate that. I appreciate this person coming mm-hmm. out and telling me that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I want to live in a world where you can't comment on the attractiveness of the opposite sex. I don't know how I feel about a world where women can't say, "Oh, this guy was hot." They should be able to. They should. In but my eyes. Objectify men. <laughs> but see, that's the difference. And that's where you're going to get, well, you just don't understand what it's like to be a woman. Exactly. And that's they, where the conversation they, just goes. I it's was, like, well, okay, but I can't, so teach us. I was going to say that. The the other thing, like, especially, like, with, uh, we just had a situation in D.C. where a female jogger was unfortunately attacked. Oh, that was bad. And that now, was so bad. And, uh, I mean, she just and attacked and, and, and killed. killed. And, and it's, it's like, very, those kind of situations are ugh. the exact thing that women are trying to get away, like, trying to get this world out of. Um, and it so, happens. I yeah. mean, it happens. And it, but the, they and they they have this fear because there are so many bad things that have happened to women in this world. Um, and it's one of the most unfortunate things. Um, I mean, I literally just watched a video today of a woman having to uh, secretly pass a note uh, t- when she was at a veterinary clinic that she was being held against her will by her boyfriend, and. Luckily, she was able to escape the situation by some smart thinking and escaping. Um, I mean, some people you've seen um, pizza orders for yeah, domestic pizza abuse. orders. Hello, Kim. She is on. You're air. on Ladies air. and gentlemen, Hot Mess Kim joins us now on the show. Good morning, Hot Mess. Good morning, boys. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. We need you to weigh in on women's uh, perspectives if you can. Okay. We need your help. Okay. I, I got I got somebody um, saying that we might not necessarily be um, I got he got scolded I, I got scolded I got it brought to my attention that sometimes the way that we talk about women is offensive and you know one of the one of the things that was brought up was calling a woman a smoke show on the air and I'm wondering if that would offend you if you heard me say I mean you know me you know how I talk um, is that something that's offensive to you in an honest answer? If it is, I want to know. I'm curious. I, I would love to know why. And if it's not, what do you think? Well, if you're being honest about her being a smoke show, I don't know why that would be offensive. But if you're using it in a sarcastic manner. No, no, no. So, so for example, let me say, so it would be like, oh my God, you guys, I did this video doctor chat. And let me just say, first of all, doctor smoke show. Boy, was that amazing. She was smoking hot. Now, can no, you just break down that sentence? I don't see how that's offensive. It's not like you said. Now, it's it's not like you can say things like, uh, "Oh, I'd fuck the sh- out of her." I didn't say I would Rude f the s out of her. F Thank you, Belly. <laughs> no, I did well, not. I'm say just that. trying to find a way, like <clears throat> something that definitely can't be said. That's not the thing. Kim, that you can you say. see why that? Could you play the other role and see why that might be offensive? Can you at least see it? No, I can't. You're saying that she's hot. What? What the fuck is offensive about that? Well, I think if I'm wrong, and I think because I was really trying to listen to the to the to the person, and I don't want to vilify the other person either. Um, but because everybody has a different way of looking at it, and some people are just getting to know us. We have new listeners all the time. Yeah. So when mm-hmm. people tune in and they ask us questions like, "Where are you coming from with that?" Well, then I like I have no problem explaining. But is it possible that maybe somebody sees that or hears that and thinks? Wow, you're really just objectifying women right there. Like, I mean, is that necessary in a world where we all have to get done up and wear things that are, you know, in a man's world? Like, really, do we need more men on the air talking about smoke shows? I'm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm the best judge of character here because the two backgrounds on my phone are of half-naked men. Thank you. So, now that was my argument, and I'm not saying you're here to either nuke it or or say that this is this is uh, worthwhile. I'm hey, just interested Chris in your Hemsworth opinion. Chris Hemsworth is a smoke show. Chris I ain't afraid to say is, he's a smoke show <laughs> for sure. I could give you that in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. You know what? I'll give you another guy that's an attractive smoke show. The guy in Kingsman. Good for him. Eggsy. Oh, you're talking about uh, the main character, yeah, the young kid. I, I yeah. wish I looked like him. Sure. 
Smoke show. Oh, if I'm trading lives with anyone right now, it's going to be Sean McVay, of head coach. Of oh the Rams. man, head coach he's of the Los dream. Angeles Rams. He is. He's another one. You can call him a smoke show. But I guess, I guess you know, Kim, we don't have women on this show a lot, and it's easy for us to get compared to a Howard Stern. Like, do you think? Do you think it's okay to comment about the attractiveness of the opposite sex? <laughs> Hey, no, if we you're not, that's, that's so stupid. No, yeah. you're not like Howard Stern. You guys are just having a good time. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that somebody is attractive objectively. There's a fine line between saying that they're attractive and being like, man, I'd love to bend her over a couch and fuck her silly. That's wrong. <laughs> but just admitting that she's an attractive person, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody window shops. 25 times a day. Yeah. Every day. Everyone They're sees someone time. and just thinks in the, to themselves, damn, Smoke that's show. an attractive person. Smoke show. Now. Yeah, but I mean, if you think somebody's really ugly and you call them smoke show behind their back is like a funny nickname. That, then, no, that's, yeah, see, that's not okay. Agreed. No, that's not okay. And you know what? I don't want to say what isn't isn't okay. In my eyes, that's not okay. Yeah. However, what if I were to, Kim, I want to say what, something that I said on the air, and then you tell me what your, what your thoughts on this is. Because I think there's a fine line between comedy and being forwarding a positive change in the culture of our country and our world. Um, we're in two positions. It was, I was reminded, listen, you're two guys that are in positions to make change. So I would like it if you would at least appreciate where we're coming from on this as, as, a, as, a, as a community of women. Yep, you got it. You got it. I think we have a lot of women st- listeners, and I love that about us. Yeah. Um, I-, I felt as if we were doing a good job of seeing s- both sides, or at least trying to portray when we don't understand we know a lot something. We amazing we- women, a oh. lot. Oh yeah, but I don't think we do a good job of trying to tell women how to feel. I-, I mean, if we don't know something, or it's from a woman's standpoint, I'm like, okay, well, you tell us, educate us, please. That's why we call it Kim. So Kim, what if I make a joke and I'm saying that I was uh, j- DJing for John Hopkins University, and let's just say. That most of them will be very, very successful as doctors, lawyers, and politicians. And in that same sense, how many smoke show doctor, lawyer, and politicians do you know? Because that was the same percentage of smoke shows at Johns Hopkins. I mean, I know at least one doctor who's pretty hot. So there you go. So is that an offensive? Is that an offensive comment, or is that just us being funny, trying to be silly? So you, or what you're saying is you're backhanded, uh, saying a bunch of uh, not so smoke shows. Most doctors, lawyers, and politicians are not the most attractive people. Politicians, is that a generalization? for sure. That's they all true. look like slugs. Look at it. It's true. <laughs> politicians are always yeah. too stressed out. Yes. Yeah, but that that bank account's pretty sexy. The bank account is very sexy. Well said. See? <laughs> Kim knows what's up. That's very true. Okay. Now, does I that mean, does that statement offend you, or can you laugh at that? Does what statement offend me? The whole the thing I just said with Johns Hopkins and politicians, doctors, and lawyers. That Is that too far? Different? Has Kim Kim have you ever been offended in your life? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, but it's difficult. Could you give us could you give us an example of something that a man has said that has offended you? And not to get too personal, I don't want to pry. Um, I mean, I dated a guy once that called me princess, but he called me princess in an extremely condescending uh, manner. Mm. So that one time I told him, if you keep calling me princess, I'm going to use my new royally appointed status and have you decapitated. <laughs> Kim knows what's up. <laughs> don't ever uh, I mean, don't ever with Kim. No, you always know What's offensive based on the tone of somebody's voice? Right. Well, well, so to you, it's tone. It's not necessarily context. I mean, I just, I don't know. Do you think that we're going into a world where you're no longer able to be silly? Do you you worry about that at all? Yeah. I mean, I think people are way too quick to be offended. Because if you're calling yeah. us sexist or, or racist, like, you're not listening to what we're saying. I mean, I'm not saying you can't be offended. I'm just saying, like, is do you have context? Have you listened to, like, half of the shows that we've done? You know, and that's radio. Somebody might just turn you on, turn the dial, you say something, their kid's in the car, they're offended, they call your company, you get a fine. Yep. I mean, that can well, happen. If you think about popular podcasts out there, Howard Stern and Joe Rogan, they're incredibly offensive, but super massively popular. 
Like, and they're not know? always offensive. They do have these episodes and things. Howard, of course, takes things too far. But, I mean, I think Howard is one of the best interview people in the His game. His interviewing is incredible. He can ask – he just gets down to the, like, nitty-grittiest questions with interviews. Um, and it, you don't you don't think – like, people who don't know Howard Stern just think he's a nasty guy who makes women do things on top of uh, speakers. That's the one that everybody goes to. Because it's, it's so movie. easy to It's remember. so easy. And, yes. But let me ask you this, Kim. That's a good point, Belly. Kim, do you do you? Because I I want to give you some the listeners some background on you. You sound very much like a you know a dude's chick right now, a, gu- a guy's girl. You know, you hang out with the guys and she can fit right in, which she is for sure. Girl knows baseball better than anyone. Oh I know. my god, she's our senior baseball correspondent. <laughs> However, sorry, bu- uh, bye bye Bryce. By the way, sorry, babe. <laughs> not, not, not over yet. Let me ask you this: What are your thoughts on? Uh, the society that man has pretty much created for women to live in uh, today. The rules that are made from, from men, the, the world, what is it like to be a woman living in a man's world, which is pretty much what's happening. I mean, I think we can all agree. Do you think we're, do you think we're on a good progressional pace of getting into a better world for women? <laughs> I yes. want to know. Actually, don't, don't. No, no, no. I don't want to go there. I want to know what it's like to live in a man's world. Well, I live in. <laughs> it's like you preface this whole thing. I I act more like a dude than I do a chick. So, I've I've never had any issues personally. You know, Kim's I get a confident I play the same. <laughs> I can hold my own if some guy wants to give me shit, I'm just going to throw it right back at him and make sure he knows he can't treat me like that. I think there's a difference between but that, a strong woman and an, another woman that's more easily rolled over. But that guy is making more money than you I. doing the same job. That guy is expected to do a lot less with his body. That guy is able to get away with a lot more from a legal standpoint. That's got to frustrate you as a woman. It does, yes. I wish I got paid the same amount. <laughs> Uh, well, I was somewhere, I was walking into the Pentagon the other day and one of the security guards was like, how's your day going? And I said, oh, you know, another day, another 79 cents on the dollar. <laughs> and he laughed. That's funny. I mean, it's sad, but that is funny. That's, that's funny. It's, yeah. it's not funny, but it's fun. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to lose that joke. I don't want to yeah. get so PC where she can't I, make that joke. Cause some woman I out there or anyone is going, be able to make that's that offensive. hundred percent of the time. I would love to be able to say another day, another same equal pay dollar. <laughs> yeah, another yes. day, another dollar on the dollar. Yep, we yeah. got another dollar. But see, I want to be there too. Have you guys heard the clip from Liam Neeson talking about um, what it would take to get women's rights? Have you heard that, Kim? No. All right, I'll play that. Basically, to preface it, he's like, oh, yes, this is terrible. He's in an interview, and she's like, what do you think about this whole Me Too movement? He's like, oh, well, I mean, we've started it as men, you know, and now it's up to us to to kind of finish it and to put a a, a dent into this situation. She says, oh, okay, great. So does that mean you would take less money for the next role that you're in so that the the female role can have it? And he he goes, oh, no, 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 no. That's taking it too far. And it's like, dude, what? You can't can't have it The money's got to come from somewhere. It's got to come from somewhere. But I think Kim has a very different mindset, and I'm glad to have you on. Um, You're a woman. You understand what it's like to live in a woman's world, but I think your confidence is something that sets you apart. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. There's always things that guys can get away with more than girls can, and that sucks. And as as a woman, I do feel that every day. Guys get promoted over girls faster you know, I could, there's a lot of politics involved here that I don't have time to get into, but you know, maternity leave, we have to take short term disability because we had a baby. We're the only developed country in the world that doesn't provide months of maternity leave to their women. And a lot of countries give paternity leave to the men too. And I just think that that's, so yes, there's a culture that keeps women down and it's keep trying to push us down and is it because you've got guys on the air saying things as maybe recklessly as the word smoke show? No, I don't think that's the reason. I think I don't either. It's but... always been the culture. No, men making jokes or objectifying women or, you know, as Trump would say, locker room talk, that's not what's keeping women down. It's the men then fighting back 
to the women who were fighting for more position in society. That's what's causing the problem is men go, oh, well, we can't flirt with you now. We can't take you out on dates. We can't do anything. You guys are all just big bitches. So we're not even going to hire you anymore. That's what's keeping us down. From the social media lounge. Kim, do you have a second to hear from them or do you have to go? No, I've, I've got a second. Everybody window shops. Yes, Kim. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's true. Everybody window shops. What else you got? Um, let's see. Uh, there are lots of things that are enormously frustrating, but I don't feel like I live in a man's world. Good. Um, most of the direct support staff above me are women. Um, those women, uh, those women that are chiming in, do you find it offensive when we say the word smoke show? Some aren't women. How could you assume that? God. What? Oh, oh, well, I mean, that's true. I thought that was coming from. Okay, well, that's fine. Do you find it offensive? Yes or no? Just type in yes or no. I'm not going to judge you on your answer. I'm going. I'm trying to learn. Does something like that offend you when we make jokes talking about how attractive somebody in the opposite sex is? I hope not. But if it does, I this is learning for me. Kim, anything on the subject before we let you go? We really appreciate your time and your honesty here because we need we need that from you. I think the key for any woman is just to create your own world in your own life and don't don't fucking worry about anybody else. Worry about yourself. And if you see another woman struggling, pick her up and carry her with you. We've just all just all don't worry about people. anyone else. And then said, don't worry about anybody else, but pick out somebody oh, next to you and help them out. Be a positive yeah. influence on the world is what Kim is trying yeah. to say. Just be a good person. <laughs> That's all. Ladies and gentlemen, hot mess, Kim. Killing it, as always. Kim, thank you for your time. We love you, and um, you're our number one smoke show. You know that. I know. Thank you, guys. Love you, too. Bye, we'll See Kim. you soon. Thank you. Bye. All right, there goes hot mess, Kim. I love her. I just, I love, she gives an honest perspective. Now, I know that she is a little bit different from a lot of the ways that maybe some other women think, but, man, there's both types. You know, there's all kinds of different people out there. And now we're going to go into a conversation where we're the guys How to, trying get to get laid, laid at the bar. Let's do it. How to get laid at the bar. <laughs> Belly's going to take it away. You are not going to want to miss this now that we've got that out of the way. Hey, listen, if you are ever offended by anything we say on the air, hit me up. Let me learn because I'm trying to learn you too. want to learn. But uh, no, I'm going to hold my ground on that one. I don't think there's anything offensive about that. I, I, well, I can't say, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. I'm sorry if it offends you, but I'm literally telling someone that I find them attractive, and I want you to be able to say that you think that I'm attractive or we're attractive. Treat others how you want to be treated as it comes from the social media lounge. Social media lounge. Golden rule. Killing it as always. You guys are the best. Let's have a blasty blast with how to get laid at the bar. It's all coming up next. From the social media lounge. I'm offended that Kim isn't on the show more. Agreed! Have you ever wondered to yourself, man, what the fuck am I gonna eat today? I got the answer for you right here, folks. It's Marinate Restaurant. You marinate your life.com. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go over there, you're gonna get yourself some sliders, some bowls, some soups, some tacos, whatever it is, because you know on Tuesdays, those tacos are buy one, get one free. So head over to the brand new store on the corner of Western and Melrose and get yourself some goddamn tacos. Let's go, baby, marinateyourlife.com. Head over there today for the best food you've never had. What's up, y'all? It's Maddie Mads here. This show is sponsored by TTR Studios. Whether it's weddings, parties, karaoke, audio, video production, and all your entertainment needs, call TTR Studios LLC at 703-850-2223 or check them out at ttrevents.com. Start the show, Looch. Best joke you've ever told, and it was off air. Great. <laughs> Best joke he's ever told, and all of you missed it. It's just for me and the personal show that I get from Belly during the breaks, and that was the best you've ever done. Wow. Oh, tell man, that I got the best rough. jokes. God, that was good. Uh. Welcome back, folks. In the social media lounge. Kim is the truth. Kim is the truth. Um, do you think David Blaine... Kim for president. Kim for president. For booze for president. She's not old enough yet. She's got to be 35. 
Oh, well, I can be When's president. When's your turn 35? This year, I can be president. Looch for president. I Running on run. the platform of smoke shows only. I can be vice president. We're going to make, we'll, we'll make a... Uh, no, I don't want you running Looch. in my office. <laughs> Looch belly bumper stickers, 20, 2020. <laughs> belly wrapped Looch dogs. Gross. Gross. <laughs> All right, so moving forward, Belly has found a new way for people to get laid at the bar. It is unbelievable. There is a... I don't know if you guys noticed, but at the Caps game where they won the Stanley Cup, when they were right, you know, after you know, a lot of you probably don't watch hockey. That's fine. I typically don't unless the Caps are winning the Stanley Cup. And then I'm like, oh, my God, rock the red. But Belly is like a diehard with Kim. They watch like every game. They talk about it. They're awesome. They, they are DC sports fans. I like the Redskins. That's where I'm at. Um, when we won the Stanley, when they won the Stanley Cup as the Capitals, you know how everybody gets a chance. All each player gets a chance to like, like skate around the rink. Hoisting the trophy above their head. And while Alex Ovechkin was doing so. That was as the whole team was doing so. As the whole team was doing so. Thank you. Very nice correction there. Uh, in the background of the players, up against the glass, pressing her very nice firm uh, breasticles, was a young woman, probably of the age of, I don't know, 24. Sorry, everyone. Super smoke show. And just pressing her boobs up against the glass. <laughs> now, this is not a man telling her to do that. This is a woman making a choice, and I'm appreciating it. <laughs> but that woman works at a bar, apparently. I don't think she works there anymore. Right down, yeah, probably not. <laughs> right down the street. Now, we're not going to say the name of the bar, but Belly went there and found a way that if she was still there, he could do this and get her number immediately. Take so, um... Uh, when you walk into a bar, what do you expect to see? A couple people, you know, hanging out. Maybe yeah. sometimes there's like like a bar game, like they have like water beer pong, maybe around they had the poker. A, they had poker going on at the bar I was at. There you go. I well, love that, What else that, was the there? Way. So I walk into the main area of the bar. The bar is at the back of the restaurant, and the area is in the middle where tables are set up where you can sit at. Hi, boys, as we call them. <laughs> And uh, what do I see in the middle of the sitting area? None other than a guy st sitting there with a box on the table. But what's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> it's a guy with a magician. He's doing magic at the bar. What? Oh. So, he's doing magic at the bar. What? Why would anyone want to do magic at the bar? What is the what is the purpose? What is the immediately goals? my per my first thought was was he look did he make it look cool? Did he make it look lame? So he he kind of he has two ways to take this dude. So he had the geeky look about him. He has glasses on. He has a oversized sport coat on. He's he it's probably a, too big a, a for tux him. Tux t shirt? No, he's not. But he is he's wearing like a he's wearing like a slightly collared shirt. He's like I think he's wearing a collared shirt. What color hair? With a sport coat over it and like slacks. Uh, I don't know. Hat? Hair doesn't matter. Hat? No hat. I need a visual. Hat, I, no hat, hat? Hat, no hat. There's no way. Don't <clears throat> do yourself a favor. If you oh want to talk to people, don't wear a hat in a bar. Excuse me. You're covering your eyes and your face. Hey, you know they won't let me wear hats on stand-up? Like, you, you can't wear hats. You go on stage with like, no hats. No hats. You cover, you shadow your face. There's, an, there's an, a very exact reason you're not supposed to wear hats on stage. You shouldn't do it in bars. Uh... It's just hats aren't hats aren't cool, guys. Hat ain't where it's at now. Hats look, aren't if cool. you're making if I because the first thing I was trying to say is, dude, if you if you have any kind of charm about you as a magician in a bar, you're getting laid. Yes, he you is, are getting those phone numbers. I I can I'm uh, I'm observing from far away. I don't really I'm not interested in his magic at Even all. Even if he's not attractive, if he's not a smoke show, yeah, he can become one. Yep, by his level of creating myst mystery, and not only that, like. When you when you blow the mind like when when he's doing yes. something that like obviously listen he was killing it he I saw him doing he the was tricks. good so he wasn't just he was doing good. like a random card and trick he comes he's obviously coming in just kind of practice for like bigger shows and bigger things he does and street performances I think but he's just going in and it it's obvious like everyone sees him in the bar people are thinking and thinking about like what he's gonna do like seeing like why is he here asking all these questions. Those questions will come up eventually because someone will go over and be like, 
What you got here? What are you, what are you doing? What are you Especially doing? Especially people who've been drinking. You got magic? What's oh, up? Oh, yeah. And if he can get one table to go, whoa, why'd you do that, man? Yeah. Now you got the whole bar. Now you got the whole bar. Including bartender he, with uh, up against the glass. And he did that. And we asked the bartender, like, so how often is this guy? I got to know more. How often is this guy coming in? P.S. If you want to see that clip, just Google it. You yeah. can YouTube that clip. She's all over the internet. And I mean, he, now is her choice. I'm not trying to put it out there. But to perform magic, you have to exude confidence. You have to be confident. Absolutely. I, I don't. I can't imagine you fumbling around on tricks if you. Oh, I can. I mean, the worst. Ma- You've seen terrible magicians. I've seen it. It's like, oh, these, you're, uh, this dude, is your car. No, I do these birthday parties. Card. I do these. Par- no, this no. Even if card. they get it right, if there's no showmanship in it, you're so lame. You just memorized a trick. Anybody can get up to a stage, mm-hmm. memorize a joke, go tell it, and you're still not a stand-up comedian. Yeah. That's not the same thing. You have to, to keep, own the stage. You have to keep the audience engaged. Yeah, dude. There's showmanship to both of these. Things. And he was doing that. And That's he was impressive. Student confidence. And Even if you look as ridiculous as you want, you could draw yeah. a cartoon character. It doesn't matter. If that person goes up to a random group of people with confidence and blows their mind, he's getting a phone number. It's the same. It's the same in a karaoke setting. If you oh, go yeah. up on stage and absolutely dominate and kill it. You're going to get a number that night. In fact, aren't you even more intrigued by the guy who shouldn't be confident, who looks like he should have zero confidence in the world and gets up on a stage and just owns the room? Yeah. Don't you love that guy or girl? That guy, you love that, that person. That guy goes from a five to a ten. Immediate dime. Immediate. Immediate dime piece. Now, I will yeah. say the person that I had, I had discussions with Smoke Show about had also not I, – they were like, what does that mean? And I said, dime. It's like a dime. It's like calling a girl a dime. What a do you ten. mean a dime? A What's that mean? Ten. A dime piece. A perfect ten. They had never heard that before. They live in a sheltered life. I don't know. I guess I said, well, ask any of your guy friends. I'm pretty sure that they will probably say, yeah, a dime piece, a 10, a perfect 10, a 10 out of 10. Rating scales have been around forever. We have our own out of 30. Hot or not? (laughs) Hot or not.com. It's how Facebook started, if you want to get into that. Kind of. MySpace. Mm. Oh, phone's bleeping. There we go. Um, no, no, no. Facebook all started because Mark Zuckerberg was really pissed off about a girl who broke up with him, and he started a, a face mash, basically. Yeah. You, they would put two people on the campus next to each other, and then you'd have to decide which one was hotter. That's I See, now that, I, I find that offensive. Hotornot.com, I find that offensive. Hotornot.com is offensive, for sure. That's I totally agree. And um, because I think- We I used think, to make profiles for our friends as jokes. And that's what I'm saying. You don't want to. You don't want to point out if somebody is ugly to you. I think that that goes o- over with the whole. Um, you know, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. But if you are literally just trying to compliment someone, um, I don't want to lose that ability to do that. Magician at a bar is that person getting a phone number? Ladies and gentlemen in the social media lounge, what would you think if there was a guy in the bar or a girl who's killing it? Would that bother you? Because I mean, this is during poker. Like people are trying to like focus. So, yeah, bluff. but he's not near the poker tables. He's in the common area where everyone's just chilling, hanging out. Oh, and people see what I'm curious about is: is the bar okay with this? Because so, like yeah. you got to imagine that that's a very fine line of maybe annoying his, their customers. Exactly. I asked the server that, and he says like, no, he comes in. He's he doesn't overly <laughs> intrude on anyone. He always lets people approach him uh, about performing. He doesn't just walk up and just do it for people. Um, and he, you know, if he gets a few numbers and gets himself laid a few times, uh, doing it make more power to him. Do you think David Blaine, I think David Blaine is the type of, of magician that would get a bunch of phone numbers. Uh, he's been laid a thousand times. Yeah. A thousand <laughs> times for magic. Or he's married and has one beautiful wife who hopefully is, he cares. Maybe that's how greatly. he got her. Yeah. Maybe that's how he traded up. Some, Hey, some people, uh, maybe he uses the magic in the bedroom. He's like, Oh, I got the condom right here. Pulls it right behind her ear. From <laughs> behind her ear. <laughs> And poof, just like that, it's gone. And that's awesome. That's so funny. That is pretty good. Yep. Yeah, I think that would be a great way to do it. I think um, what other tricks would work in a bar? You know, like maybe if you were a caricature artist and you were just like sitting there drawing caricatures of people, that could work. See, but that's creepy. No, do you? I, you I can't just sit I there like a, looking at people. You have to have a station set up, and then somebody comes over. So to you. I had a uh, convention in the hotel that was for artists, and there was this thing happening in the bar where there was a smoke show sitting at the bar beautiful woman she was, okay girl okay yeah beautiful woman she was absolutely just uh just one of those women that just really catches your attention right away sure um and but you could also see i saw like one guy he was just like he was locked in right locked in but then as i can see it i can see he's drawing her and this is a port- like from his table. The artist group is a group that specifically focuses on portraits. 
Okay, but is he sitting at a table? He's sitting at a table, and she's and just she's a just patron. A she's just somebody at a bar yeah, who's at, attractive in his eyes. Well, he he just finds her beautiful enough to where he wants to draw her, and I, I'm sure that mentality comes across greatly uh, when with them. There needs to be a moment where that person thinks to himself, "Hey, how do I look to the public?" Because right now, the answer is like a motherfucking creeper. Yeah, exactly. He's staring and drawing. <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah. And Bad news. Now his his mentality is he is a portrait drawer. He he makes his money drawing That's portraits. That's great. Of people. I'm, I interview for a living. I don't go up to every woman I find attractive and start putting them on the show. Yes, I know, but right, it, exactly. But I tell jokes for. I'm not trying to go tell jokes to anybody I find attractive with, no, yeah. without them asking me for it. Yeah. What was this guy thinking? Did he bring it up to he her? He wasn't, Luch. That's the thing. <laughs> he wasn't thinking. Did he bring her the picture? No, I don't think so. I think she left before he finished. So he just sat there as a passing time. Instead of doing Sudoku, he chose a random woman at the bar to draw. Mm. How do we feel about that? That's weird. Mm. He never he never told her. Yeah, drawing can be weird. He never told can, her. You got to focus. Well, because to me, that's a, that's like taking that's like a borderline. Like if you just take a picture of somebody and then don't tell them and then you take it home to look at later, that's no, a little creepy. That's a hundred percent. Not a little. A hundred percent creepy. That's creepy, right? That's for sure. Absolutely. So isn't that in the same realm? Isn't that what he's doing? He's no, kind so of like drawing a picture for himself. Nobody else. What you're else? talking about is just having someone like kind of, he's just in there sitting in a corner and he'll, if anyone approaches him about it. I'm talking about somebody setting up with an easel and sitting in the corner and having a sign that says free caricatures. And oh, anybody that comes up to them. You go ahead and draw them something. I would love that as a patron in a bar. I love when I do weddings and there's a caricature artist there. I think it's awesome. What a touch. Such a cool thing to have couples come up and be able to have them draw the couples. And what do you got from the social media lounge? Popping off as always. David Blaine could take me home and I'm 100% heterosexual. Yeah, see? I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude gets laid because of the mystery. If I just showed you a picture of David Blaine, would you really find that that attractive? Uh, probably not. No. Can you can you just pull up a picture of David Blaine? Let's do some production work and just hang out with the people real quick. Um, what's the name of the guy from Taken that I said Liam Neeson, right? Um, if I can find that. Oh, this yes. Oh my God, I found it. Here, you guys. Here you go. About it and a lot of this is uh, this is Liam Neeson. This is on YouTube. It's nothing that I'm taking. Um, it is from M space white five Oh five five on YouTube. This has only 18,500 views before we do that. Let's show the people David Blaine in the middle of the Santa Monica newsroom. Apparently. Oh no, that's not on the air. You're good. Sorry. <laughs> Transition. It's show. Look, this is David Blaine. Now I wouldn't give him smoke show status. I, I don't know. No, he's not a smoke show. I don't know if I give but him But magic, I'm status. sure, gets him up to a 10. Oh, magic gives him a 10. Can you zoom that? Is there a zoom in there? There isn't, is there? No. I'll find another one. No, that's fine. I just, you know, he's a normal looking dude. He's got a full head of hair. Good on him. I'll give him that. All right, so this is actually Liam Neeson talking about the gap between women and men in Hollywood. Discussion about it and a lot of healthy and necessary discussion about it because the disparity sometimes is disgraceful how do you think we can move past that we're starting we're starting and it has to start you know and it's it's starting with these extraordinary actresses and brave ladies and and uh, and we as men have got to be part of it you know we started it so we have to be part of the solution Sounds, so sounds good so far, right? I mean, we started it, so we have to be part of the solution. You think he's got a good head on his shoulders. So would you take a pay cut to kind of equal things out? No. Pay cut? No, 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 no. That's going too <laughs> far. Uh, no, there has to be parity. There just has to be. So they just got to get paid more. I'm not taking less, but they got to get paid more. <laughs> what? I mean, it's just... That's not going to work because the studio only has so much no. money. Pay cut. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> just kills me. Like what? That is not where we're coming from. I don't want to be lumped in with that. That this is, is how, that is a complete lack you, of any kind of self-awareness. If you are a small time leading man in Hollywood, I have some advice for you. 
get on this train right now. Because all you have to do is be a fairly good actor and then tell a studio they have to they can spend if you get a top Hollywood actress and then pay me the exact same as her or a little bit less. Be a pioneer. It'll help your career too. Everybody will look at I'll you take and say, Wow, thank you. you got. And I want I want the woman to I want this leading actress to be great and paid more than me. Absolutely. If you're a small time leading man, get behind this one hundred percent. And you will be the leading man in movies down the road. And yeah, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll make just as much as the you'll stay female employed. You'll paid, help. But you'll help society. Employed. By the way, you'll help further uh, equal out from women. So you know what? Actually, I'll close this out. The actors, screen actors guild, get on it. Here's a here's an idea that I had while this person brought this up in my attention. I took it to heart, and I spent a good twenty four hours at least. You know, just thinking about it, sitting there thinking, man. You know, maybe I maybe I could think maybe I would speak a little differently on the air if I had a daughter. You know, maybe is there any way that the way I'm looking at this isn't right? Could I be wrong? Can and your think, mind be changed? Can, of course, my mind can be changed. And that's why I want people to realize, like, we are here to grow and learn with you. We're not perfect. However, how can you help men? We're a perfect 10. That's for sure. Well, that's clear. How can you help men see what it's like to live as a woman in a man's world? And I started thinking about like an idea for a show. Like what if there was a show created or a movie where, you know, like Handmaid's Tale? Mm -hmm. That show's huge right now. And that it's whole huge. premise, I'm not going to know spoilers, but that whole premise is women are no longer, most women are no longer able to bear children. Children, So the, the few that are, are kind of like rounded up and then like used as like just child bearers. Like, yeah. like rich people can just, that's your hand, that's your maiden. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's terrible. Um, what if we lived in a world belly where like, I was trying to think of a situation where men had to cater to women and it was like where we figured out how to artificially create sperm and men were no longer needed in the process. And people joke all the time that 90% of women are somewhat bi at least. That women just started dating each other. No, women are just more open sexually Artificially than men. inseminating each other, not needing the male sperm anymore. And then all of a sudden, men are living in a woman's world where it's like, listen, if you want things, you're going to have to do things our way. I was trying to think of a script that would flip the script for men and try to get them to realize what it would be like to live in a world where the rules were I don't created think we're that far away from that. 2,000 years <laughs> ago by somebody from the opposite sex who doesn't get where you're coming from. And you're right, we're not that far away. We're not that far away. They, I'm sure that they could already... Um, yep, we're screwed. <laughs> not screwed. Heading towards ideally equality. I just hope that it doesn't turn and completely flip, where all of a sudden, now it's women in charge, and then men are just shat on. We got a lot of learning to do as a society, and the only way we're going to do it is if we're open to listening when people are offended. So thank you. I wanted to take today and say thank you to whoever it is that reached out to us. Teach, don't scold. Teach, don't scold. And that's exactly what that person did, and that's why I took it to heart, and I really thought about it a lot. So thank you guys for joining us today. God, it feels good to be back in studio. We'll hang out with you guys, of course, next week for The Voice of One Wheel on Tuesday. Then we've got Luch Dog in the morning, Wednesday, and Friday. Where the hell is Potts with my surprise? You know he slept through that alarm. You know he or did. He Belly. tried to call the Luch Dog line and That's it true. wasn't available. Probably did. Get us out of here, Belly. We gotta go! See you guys. Have a good day. It's Friday. Get out there. Have some fun. And of course, don't forget to join us on Tuesday for The Voice of One Wheel next week. And also, subscribe and like our channel. We love you. Comment below if you feel like it. We would always appreciate that. That does it for us, for everybody here at TCR Studios and all across the land. Have a great Friday. It's Luch Dog in the morning from TTR Studios. <laughs>